as a data and AI engineer, you are, your responsibility is that all the operations run smoothly in the Azure Databricks. But how would you ensure that all the information stored in the Azure Databricks is managed correctly? The answer lies into the Unity Catalog, which is a dedicated solution to provide the central catalogs of tables, views, and files for the easy retrieval of its users. In this vlog, we are going to demystify the concepts around Unity Catalog. Hello friends, welcome to my channel and explore the world of Microsoft Azure. My name is Rajneesh Kaushik and I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer, Consultant and an Enterprise Architect. For more latest videos and blogs, you can always log into my website rajneeshkaushik.com and subscribe to my blog. Please do not forget to subscribe my channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss the latest videos. Do like, share and comment. So let's get started. Um, these are the agenda items for today's topic. Um, first, we are going to learn what is Azure Databricks Unity Catalog. Then we will learn how the data is organized in the Unity Catalog. And then there is a new concept called Access Connector. We will understand how Access Connector works. And then finally, we will jump to uh, the steps involved in setting up the Unity Catalog. And uh, trust me, if you go to Databricks or Microsoft documentation around the Unity Catalog setup, it's pretty confusing, too huge, lots of steps involved. And you know, document jumps from one page to another page and from that page to another page, it's very confusing. And uh, by the time you could figure it out, it's almost like a couple of hours you were going to spend. So in order to simplify this process, I have written one click script, which you can uh, run and deploy the Unity catalog in no time. And I think it's go not going to take more than five minutes to run this script and ready with the Unity catalog. So we will show a demo of the same. Okay, so what is Databricks Unity Catalog? Databricks Unity Catalog is a unified data governance solution provided by Databricks. Um, it helps you to store your data, uh, which includes files, tables, databases, right? Uh, all these things in one central location and manage its access. Users are connected via the workspaces. In, as you know that uh, Databricks provides you a different set of workspaces. And these workspaces have a certain access when the user comes via those workspaces, right? So depending upon the privileges, so suppose this particular workspace has only privileges to access certain tables, but this workspace have more privileges, right? So it will be uh, granted based on the privilege. It also provides you search and discovery capabilities for data lineage and tracing purpose. So if your data is moving from source A to destination D, then you need to understand how this data is transformed between A to D and those transformations, uh, how it is happening, where it is happening, when it is happening. So this provides you automated data lineage, uh, which is already inbuilt into the system, uh, right? Another part of this is that you want to search your data across all these different data objects. So this provides you a unified search, right? Where users can discover from where the data is coming, where the data is stored, whether it is stored in tables, views or files, right? And when this data is was created, all these cap metadata related capabilities are inbuilt. That is why it is a very critical and important tool because uh, prior to this tool, you might be using some governance solutions like Colibra, Purview, or some other solutions. But now with the launch of Azure Databricks Unity Catalog, you don't need any extra set of solutions because this is your one-stop shop for all your governance needs, especially when you're working on Databricks. Okay, so let's understand how data is organized in the Unity Catalog. So Unity Catalogs uses a hierarchical structure Right on the top of it, first uh, level is the container, and this container is called Meta Store. Okay, so uh, if you have a particular Meta Store and all the child items uh, 
you know beneath it we you will be able to access it then the next step is the first level of hierarchy which is helpful for organizing your data sets right so this is the second uh, like you know uh, first level after meta store uh, then the third level is schemas and schemas is nothing but a typical a schema used in a database right so similarly these are the, this is called schema and this is nothing but a database and as you know the database contains different set of objects like views tables there are two types of table external table and managed tables external tables are tables which is stored in the external location in the cloud storage and managed tables are stored in the container in, inside a container which is created in the cloud storage so this is the two set of tables and then as you know the read only views read only views are uh, created from the tables so this is how the overall structure works in unity catalog okay so now let's understand what is an access connector and uh, this is a brand new um, component in azure right and how it works is that whenever you try to deploy a unity catalog you need to deploy data databricks access connector and you need to enable the managed identity of that connector and all the connectivity to the um, storage uh, like whether it is uh, storage account in azure or aws s3 bucket it will only happen with the help of databricks access connector right and how it works is that databricks access connectors are created either you the cli or you can directly create it in the portal and you need to enable the uh, managed identity right and once you enable the managed identity you will be able to, the databricks account can access the um, you know any item via this connector and it can work seamlessly right so your permission you need to grant the specific set of permissions to this connector like suppose you try to access your storage account so storage account should be given um, you know storage blob contributor access Uh, to this particular uh, connector's managed identity, so that this connector, when this connector have access to the storage account items, then automatically DataBrick will get that uh, access via this connector, right? And in this um, connector, the managed identities are delegated to Unity Catalog Meta Store because there are the these managed identity which is used here, right? The same identities are delegating the permission. to the uh, destination sources where uh, it is trying to connect and that is how the whole permission works okay and we are going to showcase this how to create this and then how it is being used right so this is nothing but a bridge between databricks and storage account um now we will understand how to set up the databricks unity catalog in 5 minutes or less and as i promised that uh if you go via the route of uh, microsoft documentation or databricks documentation it is pretty huge and you have to jump from one part to another part you will not understand what is the issue uh, why it is not setting up lots of challenges uh, i myself have faced these challenges so to simplify that i have published my blog where i have uh, posted uh, my uh, cli script which you can run in one shot okay so this is a demo time let's uh, go to the demo uh this is the powershell isi and um, the beauty of of this script is that you can run this whole script uh, inside the powershell isi uh, and then before you run this you need to install the databricks cli i have already provided a link to install the databricks cli in my blog you can refer there and you need to also have a azure cli deployed and then there is another utility called jq which you need to deploy and all these deployment links um, are already provided in my blog so you can refer there now let's uh, start setting up the variables and these are the variables which is required for um, you know our script when we go further so first step is setting the values of the variables so i am just setting it then the second step is um, we need to also know our databricks workspace here and databricks workspace is easy to find it out if you go to the uh, databricks uh, you will be able to find that. so how to find out the workspace and set this value here 
uh, once you log into the Databricks workspace, uh, you will find this URL and at the end of it, after O equal to, this is a workspace ID. So you need to copy this workspace ID and paste it in this variable. Okay. So now first step is to log into the Azure. Okay. So we have successfully logged into the Azure. Now let's start creating the resource group. So this will create a resource group called Unity. Done. Then we are going to create a storage account. And this storage account, we need to enable the um, hierarchical namespace here. But by mistake, if in case you know you uh, forget to enable it, I have provided you the optional command, which can be used after you created the storage account to enable the uh, hierarchical namespace, which is uh, nothing but a uh, making the storage account as a data lake gen two. So this is optional. I'm go not going to. Um, use this command. Now let's go to the next uh, command where we are going to uh, retrieve the storage key. Okay. And once we have the storage key, uh, what we will do is we are going to create a storage container, right? And this is the storage container we are creating. Uh, then now you have a storage container, you have a storage account. The next step would be to create a Databricks access connector. Okay. And uh, find out its URI. Okay, so there is a URI associated with that connector, and then there is a um, uh, we already uh, enabled the managed identity for this, which is uh, here system uh, system assigned identity. So this is already enabled. And now what we are going to do, we are going to find out the principle of this identity. So this is a principle of the identity, and this variable will store that, right? So let's see what is the resource ID, a URI. So if you see this is a resource URI and then if you see the principal ID, principal ID is enabled because we already have the managed ID enabled on that. Now you once you have this variable set up, what we are going to do, we are going to grant the storage blob data contributor access, okay, uh, role assignment. And this role will be assigned to the Databricks principal uh, used for the access connector, which is here. So this principal will be granted storage blob data contributor uh, level permission on the storage account. So let's do it. Okay, so storage um, already granted this permission. Um, now, now um, we are going to create a meta store first. Right. And before we go further, let me show you whether this uh, storage account is created and if it is created successfully, uh, where it is created, which resource group it is created. So you can see Unity catalog is created. In the Unity catalog, you will see that this connector is created. This connector has a um, managed identity. If you copy this value, um, 5BC, right? And this value is the manager identity. And when we come to uh, storage account, we have granted access to this managed identity. And if you go to access control and role assignment, you will find this particular managed identity unity access connector here. And this is granted storage block data contributor. So that means our script is working fine. Now, now we are going to create a meta store. So let's move to this meta store creation step. Here, this is a meta store creation step. So it is created and it stores the meta store ID here. Okay, so now we are going to assign the um, workspace uh, to this meta store. Uh, so let's run this command. Okay, so workspace is assigned now. And if you come here and see this particular meta store, and you go to workspace, you will find that this workspace is assigned now. And prior to that you this was not there. So that means workspace is successfully assigned. 
now we are going to create a credential storage credential okay and um, this will be done through the databricks cli right and this storage credential will have a access to the um, connector access connector which we created earlier right and then we will retrieve the value of the managed identity of this uh, connector and store it into the uh, here we will use it here so this is the um, credential id is created and uh, if you already have the existing credential and then you need to retrieve it and, and store it into this variable so we are creating it brand new so now you can see that uh, this is a brand new so we don't have to worry about this step now the second step would be uh, after this 11th step the 12th step would be we will create a permission file permission json and this permission json file will contain the changes um, in this example i have created a permission file for all the accounts user we want to grant a access these four access right but depending upon the access you want to grant you can change this value and then we will store it in a json file and then utilize this json file in the next command so in this case we are going to first um, you know uh, access this json file which i have created here right and this particular code is also given in my blog so you can copy paste and try it and then we will grant the permission um, the, the permission storage credential permission from the json file so that storage credential have the required permission and people who want to access that they can access via this permission right so if you see this uh, command it all you know it is referring to json file okay so this is done and then now we have the storage credential uh, now we will assign this storage credential to the meta store because now this by this time we have already created a storage credential we have used the managed identity of the access connector to the storage credential so that storage credential can access it and then now we have also assigned a specific set of permissions so let's see um, in the databricks uh, catalog whether it is visible or not okay so now we are in the and databricks uh, workspace so first you need to select the sql part not machine data science engineering or, or machine learning uh, because we are going to see all these settings in the sql and then once this is selected we are going to click data and in that you will see the data explorer where it will show you all the meta stores and um, storage credentials so in this case we will check our uh, storage uh, credential and in this case storage cr credential is already here meta store credential and if you come here the, there are these permissions and these are the same permission which we have created by the json file i have just shown you okay so now we have assigned this storage credential um, right we have already assigned this storage credential to the uh, meta store so the next step will would be to start uh, creating other set of objects right so we have already assigned the credential uh, to the meta store uh, that's why it is visible there now we are going to create catalog okay so that is a um, from so first it is a meta store right and met, after meta store uh, what are the uh, what are the hierarchies which we have learned so these are the hierarchies which we have seen after that it is a catalog so we will create a catalog now okay so catalog is created and let's check if the catalog is there or not so so this is the catalog then we will now um, have the catalog created we are going to create a schema schema is nothing but a database so now we have the schema um, from this onward if you want to create a table um, you cannot use databricks cli so for this we are going to use our um, notebook in sql which i am going to show you okay so before we 
go to the notebook i want to just share couple of useful commands for the uh, databrick uh, if you want to understand which uh, meta store you are trying to connect or it's if the current meta store this command is pretty helpful you can uh, run this command to find out the all the values related to the uh, meta store so let me uh, let me do this if you want to list all the workspace you can use this command right and before you run this whole um, commands in databricks you need to configure the databricks uh, cli and for that configuration there is a different command which is given in my blog as well right and that com command is databricks um, uh, you know configure command configure token and then it will you will have to first create a token and then with that token you can access this so let me share that um, in my blog so if you see this blog there are lots of um, code here right so first is the um, you know how do we deploy the databricks uh, uh, you know cli then how do we deploy the uh, azure cli creating a workspace and then jq utility and this is the first command you will use uh, to create a token and then you will use this token to con connect the databricks cli um, to the workspace so this is the command which you need to use okay so now we are able to create the um, uh, catalog and schema and this is another command which you can use for listing your tokens okay so uh, with this we have already completed the setup of um, databricks unity catalog now let me go back and uh, create the tables uh, inside the uh, uh, notebook sql notebook right so that is what we are going to do so let's go to the um, unity catalog uh, uh, this notebook and i have actually given these commands written in this here in my blog so you can try that right so um, before you uh, run any command first you need to use that schema and that is exactly i have come, uh, done here uh, so you know if you don't want to go ahead and use the cli for your catalog creation you can use the sql commands as well but in our case we have already created a catalog so i am not going to use it right and uh, if you try to showcase that how many catalogs you have because we already created one so what we can do we can run this command and it will show you our uh, catalog which is already created okay, so yeah it, it is already created this is a catalog which we created right and then this command can also be used to Uh, grant a specific set of uh, schema, um, right? You know, you can grant a permission to a schema, right? Uh, which is a part of that catalog. So that is one. So in our case, what we are going to use, we have already have a catalog. We are not going to again run that command. Um, now we are going to use uh, create a schema, right? Uh, and in fact, schema is also created, right? Here, if you see. a uh, unity catalog schema is also created so we are not going to use this command again but if you want to use everything from the uh, notebook you can use this notebook now instead of doing this or commands i am going to now jump directly to the uh, table creation command right so here is the table creation command so now we are going to we have already used the schema and within the that schema we are going to create a table so this is a table creation command so in our example we have already created schema we are not going to again create the same schema here uh, because we already have it uh, so we will just uh, use the schema we will use use schema and after the use schema we will just uh, create the table and after table is created we are going to insert some values into the table this is a very small table with the two columns one and two so we are going to um, add the data and then um, the data is already added now we will see that whether this table is created or not 
and then we will also describe this table um, this is what it shows this is the table describe command and same is applicable here if you refresh this view so once you refresh this it will show you the table name so this means that we are successfully able to create a table and and then you know we are able to browse it you can also type the select star from the table from the sql and it will show you the table contents okay so let's summarize what we have done we have created a meta store we have created a catalog schema and then table and then we were able to browse it hope this was helpful thanks for watching and do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon